I was 11 years old, um, Miss Looper wrote this book called Brother President, and she turned it into a play. And the play was so good that the National NAACP asked her to come and present the play in New York and Washington, D.C. So here again, my parents love me, and they didn't want me too far out of their sight, so I wasn't allowed to go. But the kids that went, and they saw when they left Oklahoma that they could eat in any restaurant they wanted to eat in. They could um, stay in any hotel they wanted to, and they were treated like real people, not just whatever. Yeah. So uh, they went up there. And then when they come back to the South, they'd see this environment. So Ms. Looper had us, you know, the group was the NAACP youth, youth group. And we often meet at her house. In fact, we always met at her house. But one time after they came back, we were meeting in our front yard, and we were just sitting out there talking. And I have to give Marilyn Looper credit. Marilyn is her daughter. And so Marilyn's sitting out there, and if you haven't met Marilyn yet, I don't know if you know who Marilyn Looper is. Marilyn Looper is, again, a community leader in, in Oklahoma City, and she is really, really a sharp person. Uh, but at that time, Marilyn was, she's, she was in my class, so she's really fiery. So she goes on a rant, and I mean a rant. Marilyn, if you know Marilyn, Marilyn goes on lots of rants. So she goes, goes on this rant, and whatever comes out of her mouth is the truth, but it, there's no buffalo on it, okay? <laughs> So she starts talking about how horrible it is in Oklahoma City that we can't eat in restaurants. And the thing that people kind of miss as they start thinking about the city ends, many of our parents would ride the bus to downtown and right on Main Street between <clears throat> Broadway and Robinson, all the buses would stop right there and people would do transfers. Like say, for example, if your mother or your father worked out at Nichols Hills, they would ride to downtown and they'd do a transfer right there and then they'd ride the bus out to the other, to Nichols Hills or wherever they're going to do domestic work. The, if you stop and think about it a little bit farther, you think about, okay, when they stopped for that break, there was no place that they could use the restroom. There was no place that they could eat. There was no place that they could sit. They would just have to bear with it until they got to where they had to get to. Okay, you got Greens right across the street. You got Johnny Brown's right there. You got... Um, uh, all the stores that are right there on Main Street, that's where all, this, all the major stores used to be at that time. Uh, we could go in there and buy stuff, but we couldn't buy food, we couldn't sit down, but they would take our money. So Marilyn goes into this rant, and she decides that we need to do something about this. And she's ranting about it and talking about we need to go down and challenge the, the system. Her mother comes out, because she's our leader, and she says, if we're gonna do this, we need to do it right. Yeah. You know, we need to do it right. So she says, we need to train ourselves in such a way that when we go do this, we remain together, we remain respected, and we understand how to deal with problems as they come up. So we had classes to teach us how to deal with when people curse you out. If somebody hits you, what to do? If somebody spits on you, what to do? Not to overreact. We had classes that taught us how to walk in to the restaurant in a calm way and sit down. And when the waitress walks up, and says, you can't, don't belong here, and said, I'd like to order a hamburger and a Coke. And they all said, no, we're not going to sell you a hamburger and a Coke. And I said, well, I'll just sit here until you give me a hamburger and a Coke. Yeah. <laughs> and we, that's what we did. And we would have something we call song practice, where we would go to Calvary Baptist Church here in Oklahoma City, where we, we would meet, and we'd, and we'd march downtown to whichever restaurant we chose to go to that day. Uh, we would do one restaurant at a time. But what Ms. Looper taught me was one, if you see something needs to be done, don't randomly go into it. Be plan, be, be, have, a, have an organized plan, be organized, understand how you're gonna deal with problems. And for lack of a better term, use your intelligence to deal with things in such a way that you're outthinking others. You know, the idea to use children was intentional. Yeah. Because people are much less likely to hurt a child than they are to hurt an adult. I'm not even totally sure, as I thought back on it, that this would have been successful if we'd had adults down there. The other is that adults would probably react different. <laughs> you couldn't tell them to sit there. It was kind of funny, because she also had what I call control people. Um, have you ever heard of a guy by the name of Portwood Williams? I have not, no. Okay, Portwood Williams used to build, rebuild furniture in our neighborhood. 
Fort Hood Williams was the kind of the male figure there that if he thought one of us was losing our temper, he'd come grab us and pull us out okay. and take us and, and, you know, put somebody else in. Yeah. Fort Hood Williams also happens to have a grandson named Kanye West. No way. Yes, absolutely. So that's Kanye West's connection to Oklahoma. That's Kanye West's connection to Oklahoma. His mother grew wow. up here. And his, and, his, and his uncle was also one of our city. I mean, his... Uncle was also one of our sitting kids. Yeah. So that's his connection to Oklahoma, Fort Wood Williams. Wow. Um, but his mother left and went to, I think, Chicago and then sure. L.A. But I just want to share that with you because it's kind of funny it how is, yeah. you go all the way around the world and you come back. So that's all I'm going to say about Kanye West today. <laughs>